Okay, uh, so I'm Shimantra. Uh, this is a do session mostly. So we are going to make sure that you run some of the tests. That's what the whole intention of the session is. But to start with, let's start off with the very idea of why this session is and why you guys are here. So the whole idea that started was we kind of test Fedora on different architectures and different hardwares. And now we have generally me as a Red Hatter. I test it on a T460S and mostly most of the Red Hatters do that. So we hardly face issues, but when it comes to off-the-shelf community hardwares, there are tons and tons of hardwares where we keep getting issues which uh, well, are not that great to hear about, but then they, they complain a lot about Wi-Fi drivers not working, <laughs> some chipset not working, and that kind of like tells us that, hey, you know what, we probably need to fix some of those stuff. So the whole idea of this session would be kind of to make sure that anyone, being a Red Hatter, non-Red Hatter, can start learning how to test basic stuff and then report them back to uh, the kernel team, Fedora kernel team. So essentially, people would start understanding, OK, these are the things which failed, these are the things which passed, and things like that. So to start off with, uh, most of my whatever that I'm talking about was covered in the last session by Laura, half of it, precisely. Um, start with, let's go to this page. So there's this thing called kernel testing initiative, which um, which people So there is this initiative called Kernel Testing Initiative, which was started by Fedora Kernel team. And this wiki page resides where mostly everything about how to test and what to test and what to look for kind of resides. This is the whole initiative programs which is there. Now this basically is one thing that I suggest most of the community people to get started off with when they are trying to kind of uh, getting started with testing kernels. Now, in this link, there's one specific pointer which would give you a guideline, sort of, for regression testing. And then there, it, it would point you to a bunch of test suits, so which is this kernel regression test suit. So it's a fairly simple process. There's a git repo, which you clone. And then you install three specific <coughs> packages. So Fedora, Python Fedora for reporting, <coughs> GCC, and Kit for basically Kit for cloning and uh, GCC for like whatever the process is when you start running this uh, run run test dot sh. So that's what is the very bare minimum prerequisite that you have to start off with. So once you have done cloning this part, if you once you have cloned this, you will probably end up having this kind of something like that. So this is going to have a performance where you're going to see a bunch of tests there. And then there is going to be this script called run test.sh, which you're going to run as a person, uh, like as on a VM or like or on a bare metal, whatever you want to test. So I ran the test. And let me run it again, just for the sake of it. Oh, this is live. OK. Oh, yeah, it's live. Cool. So, So, <laughs> yeah, it's going to take some time. So, uh, I did not configure the config file. You can actually put up your fast details over there, which would basically <coughs> directly upload it to the web app. I did not put it there. Uh, but if you want, you can just edit the configuration. The steps are pretty much in this document itself. Um, yep, so, steps are pretty much this. And, yeah. The document actually does need to be updated. There are a couple new things we've added to config now, um, like the option to test the that the NVIDIA module works with new kernels, okay. or, or that it compiles against them anyway. And then the uh, if the you could send me a uh, list of changes, I could probably do. Okay. Yeah, I mean they're actually in the config. It's just they're they're documented in the mm -hmm. config. I just haven't put them on the wiki. So okay, sure. So 
that so that's going to run and it's basically going to end up giving you a link to a text file which you could then upload that's basically what the whole process goes like um, moving forward say so yeah, it has passed most of it uh, yeah few skipped so <laughs> what i wanted to do with this is uh, keep on having fedora qa onboarding calls where new contributors come in and they kind of learn how to test multiple things uh, in Fedora. One of the things that I focus on in those kind of places is I kind of focus on getting the kernel tested. So I have a bunch of community people in like the, in the QA team who are involved and we get the kernel tested and they upload their logs and they do it on a regular basis. So yeah, that, that's kind of great for us. But what we wanted out of it was if we could have, uh, that's what I proposed in the last session, if we could have a test day, a specific day where people would probably be testing things and filing bugs. And later on, probably we could mature that model to a bit where we can have this as a very specific calendar event for every release, every cycle, some specific time we have this test day running. So mostly like we have regular test days on i18n and cloud that's basically those are the two test days we have for every cycle no matter what so i wanted kernel to be a part of one of those test days which we run for every cycle for every release so that that's what mostly the session was about uh, the whole idea was to do a do session which is basically uh, running it on the hardware so that's what it is, and I would like to know the feedbacks and how you think like we could help uh, testing more rigorously, and how do you think it would be it would be a more uh, connect between we could have the non Red Hatters and the people who use off the shelf hardware to kind of have more like idea about prioritizing like you guys were talking about if you can give me a kind of a rough sketch of how you guys do it, we'd be more than happy to put it down to the community member saying, hey, you know what, there's a specific thing that you can try it, and yeah, that, that probably will help a lot going forward. That would so. be fantastic. So and there's actually a, so there's a kernel uh, bug triage page, actually, we can talk the kernel page, okay. which, which walks through the basics of, of how to do bug triage there. Um, for testing more things, um, you know, we've we've asked and asked uh, our presented at Block what two or three times, asking people to write and submit tests to this particular test suite. Um, now, if you were in the last session, you heard that that a lot of Red Hat's internal tests are are about to become external tests, and there's there's an initiative there, and those are going to be brought in, uh, and and some. Uh, quite a few resources, but just because we're throwing, you know, Red Hat's throwing resources at those, uh, at this problem from a, here's some hardware to run a bunch of tests on, doesn't make test data from end users less valuable because they're not mm -hmm. going to be running what the average, you know, it's going to be enterprise hardware. It's not going to mm -hmm. be what the average users is. So we do need users uh, running these tests. And my, my goal is to integrate everything that they're doing Mm -hmm. um, into this test suite as well. Okay. Um, but there's a lot of tests that will not exist there. Tests that, you know, if you've got a specific piece of hardware, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you might want to run a test on it. And so there's there's a page in the How to Write a Test uh, wiki yes. that kind of talks about, you know, you can search for a module. Is, is this module in inserted? And okay. if the module is loaded, you know, if the driver for this device is loaded, then I want to go ahead and run those tests. And if not, you skip it. You don't want to mm -hmm. fail a test because it's not. So, um, you know, those types of things, if, if the community gets involved and says, well, hey, I have this piece of hardware. I, I would like to make sure that it continues to work in this way. Great, write a test. Um, yeah, and, and submit that. Okay. For the so test day stuff, I, I know that Fedora QA is, is much more concerned with release cycles. Um, the kernel, though, works differently than most things on release cycles. We rebase frequently. And so it would, I think, be even more useful, and I'm, I'm wondering if it's too much of a workload, to have those test days be 
every time there is a, a, a upstream Linus release, which is about once every three months. Um, I mean, the reason I have, so like uh, 4.13 should be coming out soon, right? Uh, and it's probably too quick to organize a test day on that. But uh, when is that coming up? Possibly Sunday, possibly the week after. So, and and I know Laura and I are going to be in in Plumbers in LA the week after. Uh, okay. But yeah, but the next one will be 414 in in roughly three months. Okay. Or ten weeks. Yes. Yeah. Four, 413. Wednesdays is kind of an exception in that it's a process that isn't particularly tied to these days. We do kind of by default tend to organize them based on their release cycle, but very little coupling there. Yeah, well, um, I mean, that there's no fundamental reason you can't just do test days like on that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I, when I was doing the Vert stuff, I, I ran test days for Vert, and it was based on release cycles because that was you know, how you did it. This yeah. is the new package that's going in, and yeah. or the new set of packages that's going in, and new yeah. features, Vert features going in that need to be tested, yeah. and they weren't changing during the release. Yeah, yeah the, the next the next version yeah, will get there's it. There's really not much people we have to start testing. Exactly. Really okay. So when do you propose the this one to me? Um, so there's a website called phpcrystalball.org, which is the idea of being able to forecast when kernels are going to release. Oh, it's really? Yeah. Oh, um, I thought you were joking. No, it's definitely <laughs> 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 Right. So I'm perfectly happy to do that. Yeah. So, so the the thing is, uh, an average kernel cycle goes with a two week merge window, mm -hmm. and then RC one is at the end of that two weeks, and every week after that you get another RC. Typically, um, I would say they average seven point five. You, know, you get uh, a lot of times you get RC seven, and the next week will be final. Although it's a lot of times you get an RC eight, and the next week will be final. Okay. Uh, but, but is the not more of the question, I think the question when is like, should we do this between the final RC and when that kernel is being sort of expected to be pushed out to update to stable releases? Is that before you can cycle? Should we do it earlier? Should we do it with a late RC of the kernel? Um, I don't, so because of the way that, that things work upstream there, I don't think that that's going to do us as much good. I think it's the, I, I think the optimal time is between final release and dot two, dot three. Okay, so, so early RC is the best time. Of no, an early. No, no, no early. release. Oh, okay, release. Yes. Because, because there's, the, there's the whole stabilization yeah, process yeah, that's yeah, so a separate okay. tree after that. So you'd be looking at 4.14.1, not 4.14.1. Yeah, well, I, I was thinking from a timing thing, since there's basically a week of variable there, if we schedule them for two weeks after when PHP set, mm -hmm. says that the release is going to be, that's going to be somewhere in between actual release and, and when we would consider rebasing. Right. So, we, so we wind up or we wind up testing on zero and after one zero. Do one of your own The thing is also because this would be basically the same event every time. Yes. Mm -hmm. We don't need an awful lot of preparation. Oh, no. time. It's not like a brand new complicated test data that we've never run before where we're going to spend three months discussing how to do it. Right? No, yeah. exactly. We really do this every three months. We can turn it into a pretty well organized thing where we can decide on the day, you know, two weeks at a time. I, I think the, the most work would be um, we would need to, because you want to run on a stable release and not with raw hide and things like that, um, and we do want people to be able to build external modules or things like that if we need to. So we need to build a version of the kernel for test day mm -hmm. you know, th against that release, and then we need to spin a quick image. and. That's minimal work. Yeah, actually. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I could probably get the process ready within a day for. That sounds like a great thing for you to work on. I think I would Got a few be minutes. able to do it in the next one. I mean, the coming one? Well, I can. The, the, the coming one, the problem, there's there's a couple of problems. Um, you know, one is we're back for a week and then. Um, the kernel maintainers are going to LA for a week for plumbers. Oh. 
along with a lot of other people. So, um, thank you. Maybe John could want to yeah. start with 14. Maybe. Yeah. Well, you know what? Or maybe we could do one later in the 13 cycle, yeah. which yes. would be yeah. abnormal, except for the fact that 13 is going to be the release kernel for 27. Yeah. pretty much on release day have the kernel ready to go. You don't have to, you have to rebase some patches, but it's really not a huge deal, right? Um, on Linus's release day? Yeah. Chances are we just did a snapshot on Friday and then he released yeah. on Sunday and he might have put one or two patches in. Usually he doesn't. Usually the only That's patch true. he puts in is a version change between Friday and Sunday. And when he doesn't, he apologizes for it. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's ready to go to that by that point because we just built it on Friday. Okay. So it's not like there's a lot of work you have to do before 4.14.0 is packaged well, and ready. There's, so this this has to be a little bit of different uh, because because of the way rebases work. So um, it's not just quite a, a direct copy over. There are certain things that have changed in Rawhide that may not be in F26 or right. stuff like that. So um, And especially if we're looking, going through and doing some config changes those config changes, like turning off things, yeah. we, we wouldn't turn off things in F26. Well, that's true. Even though we've turned them off for F27 because you know, someone might actually be using and expecting to work. If we're turning off a bunch of stuff and it goes through the whole rawhide cycle and then the whole release cycle and nobody's complained, then we know it's safe to keep that off, but we don't want to yeah. do it make kernel updates. So there is a rebase <coughs> process there, but it's, it's not that big. Is there a possibility that you would want to have people <coughs> test more than one kernel? As part of a test day, more than one arch would be nice. Well, arch is tough. Yeah, because not everybody has yeah. an arch machine sitting around. But I don't know about uh, more than one. Well, the kernel with the stuff, and then the kernel with the things turned off that you expect to turn off for the next release. Could do that. I mean, I don't know. I mean, is is that feedback useful to you? It would, well, you know what? It would be awesome if we have people who are. Everybody's coming to test a kernel. Yeah. And we're trying to test a release kernel that's going to be the rebase, right? Right. But hey, on that same day, which is probably right at the end of the merge window, mm -hmm. could you also, since you're taking some time to test, test the rawhide kernel? Oh, uh, yeah. With the rawhide image. And that way you get feedback, not only on the, the kernel we're thinking about rebasing, oh, right. you get feedback as soon as the merge window is closed. Which is going to find, I mean, there's a... There's, there's a lot of, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of cruft in there, but it's useful information, and it's a time when you can actually act on it. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, it's a lot better than bisecting. Well, it can be a you can be a rawhide kernel on a yeah. I was thinking rawhide kernel on a stable on a stable image is fine. Okay. You know, unless there's some reason to have a rawhide user environment. As well. Our our test server has never. Uh, yeah, I, I don't install an image. I just constantly update rawhide. Yeah. So and then when we branch, yeah, I just copy that that image to be the new image and then you want to make some changes. So. I have a feeling we'll get fewer takers, but you know, a lot of those four twelve bugs that you know, those should have been caught at all if we had people testing. Yeah. yeah. Well, you could always say that. There were big ones. Linux not enabling parts of the system due to work. That was a policy. It wasn't a kernel thing. It was a policy thing. But if it had been reported, then the policy would have been ready before. Yeah. You could argue that the SC Linux maintainers knew that that was coming and probably should have put the policy in before they ever had a chance. But that's the thing. How long is SC Linux maintaining these SC Linux? Surprise. SC Linux. Yeah. Is. Oh, oh, no. Yeah, because we switched how it's maintained. The policy is maintained in, in another It's reactionary. Yeah. yeah. That's problematic. I need to fix that up. I don't think there's just somebody that needs to put this guy back and that it's not just coming here. So, you know, maybe fine. we should add a test that looks for, that looks in, in the methods of fresh boot for SE Linux denial. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I only want it on this boot. Yeah. You're, you're testing new kernel. How's the parameter to dash T S when you when you want to Yeah. I usually so recent or just there is an option for this one. There is. Yeah. In fact, I, I don't I don't know that I would add it as a pass fail test. Right. But just, just add the report at the end of the log so that Oh yeah, no, you're right. be newer than the last time I checked. That that might be very worth adding just so that we've got it if they're not. Yeah, yeah what can it hurt? I mean. Well, because policy used to be maintained by the same person who's maintaining the kernel file. So okay. they not Those failures on there um, are very interesting. F27 and Rawhide fail immediately. If you look at the failure, it says secure boot signature failure. Something happened with the PE sign. I don't know if you remember the debacle where we couldn't actually build kernels for a couple of days because we couldn't sign them. So they're being signed. And when I boot up the test system and run the test again, they pass. And all this is doing is grepping from a string in the kernel. So it's not, I don't know why they always fail on this initial boot. But it's only those, it's only those two every time now. Failed test, secure boot, check SP signature. Show the test oh. for that. It's under secure root SP test. It's very simple. No, it's nothing to do with that. Yeah, it's uh, <coughs> secure root. It is signing them correctly. The, the, the point is I can log into that exact same VM that's got the exact same kernel installation on and run this test again and it passes. And as you can see what it's looking for, there's no reason that it should. <coughs> yeah, that, that information would never change. If you do it the second time you run this exact script. Uh -huh. right, no, I just actually will, I can't run test again. And it passes. But it's been every time since they did that upgrade. Every time we've built since that upgrade. Only on yes. 27 or 28. Which upgrade? The P sign yeah. update. Oh, P sign up. Okay. <coughs> I'm rooming with Peter. I might have to hit him over the head a little bit this week to figure it out. Can you tell what it does out? Oh. Uh, that script was Yes. Yeah, you we do. Running? Echo signer. That was a log on the test fail. Yeah, what actually that showed that the Fedora signer is Fedora Secure Boot Signer. That uh, what page? I can't remember what it oh, yeah. <laughs> It says the right thing. It doesn't fail. It says the right thing, but yet it's still. But, oh. 
the only thing that I'm guessing is maybe something with PE sign is returning the right information, but it's not exiting. The right return code. Or Wait, so where is this output? Yeah, where's all the side that was here? It's right at the top, like for signature, Fedora package, Fedora secure boot sign. Yeah. Go Looking for signature, Fedora secure boot sign, and then blank line, and then. Yeah, go back to <laughs> we could probably just look at this same yeah. URL and then wait. <laughs> Interesting remote oh, control system. Move the mouse to the left. <laughs> oh, never mind. That is the problem. Yeah, no, that's, that's not right at all. That's not the output. P sign is yeah. failing. No, that is the output it's looking for, which is uh, it's set in the dot config file, so that this might be useful for other people who are like doing their own tests. Uh, it's set in the config file, and that is what it's looking for. But if you see the echo signer is where we're getting the blank line. Yeah. So yes. <coughs> That's what why it's are we not getting, getting the yeah. output? It's not getting the sign value it's looking for at all. Right. But if I run the test again, it does. Yeah. And if you were to run it on your system, it would be right. <coughs> Provided a 686 64. I mean, the debug of that, though, is, you know, just dump some more info. What is P well, sign? Yes. Dash I returning. That doesn't get captured, so. It, it does get captured. Yeah, that's no, the, um, the return yeah. code doesn't, though. That's the thing you see right after. And the rest of its output balance. doesn't get captured either. <laughs> It's getting grabbed out, so. Look in the signature balance, you can then the the empty line there. Yeah, is the echo. Yeah, the dollar sign. Yeah, sign. Yeah. yeah, which is the output of yeah, the yeah, yeah. comment. That's that's the that's where we should see the text that it that it looks for at the end of the time. That's where we get the right line. Yes, because it'll kindly tell you when it's red hat test certificate, which we should not show. Although. One thing you're not getting there, you're not getting the STD air output of the P sign. Yeah. If it's no, we're not. showing some kind of error message or something, yeah. you can maybe capture that with the guys. We can do that. The problem is they don't like logs being too large uploaded to this. I'm not sure why we have arbitrary log size limitations on here. Right. It had something to do with people being able to upload, like, Split some sort of a pirated binary or something into <laughs> tiny chunks. Or yeah. like <laughs> yeah. Usenet in 1994. The, the, but that was what they Who explained. Who actually made that comment? Because that's a weird one. Uh, well, it was either 3 bean or, or the same Usenet base has a size limit, though, so people got abused in the file storage. Yeah, but the, the, the size limit is like tiny. Um, so. <coughs> but STB error approach is not likely to be very long. It's only going to be like those people. Yeah, we can, well, we can do it on that test, but it only fails on the fresh boot of being yeah, on those tests. Yeah, I know maybe if you get the out error output, it might give you some kind of clue as to why it's failing on that boot, not on your second boot, right? Yeah. Well, wow. actually, it's not even a reboot. Um, or a second detector. Rawhide, so yeah. F27 shuts down after the tests were run. Right. Those, those BMs shut down, but the rawhide BMs are on 24 7. They never shut down, they just reboot to get a new kernel. So, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, it hasn't been. We've got bigger issues, so it hasn't been. Uh, the no, I, I like I like the new phone. So that's a good move. Yeah. Maybe maybe that'll be my next priority after it goes all fixed. I'm running a bicep right now. Okay. It's going very slowly. That's the other thing I can do. I can write comments on the More busy. I mentioned that I would be in this session on um, on.
on the planet and told people if they had like weird laptops and things that don't work, sometimes those are easier to be plugged in person, please bring them. So if anybody brought anything, come let me know. I bought Lenovo specifically so that I wouldn't have that problem. I, I've had a couple people come up to me and you know, we, we found one yesterday which I forgot, I'm going to close another bug on. Uh, 